Actually, these modest people do not like to be called Baho, because Baho is actually a derogatory term from people outside of the Baho. They prefer to be called Sama people. Meanwhile, they refer to outsiders as Bagai people. For centuries, navigating the oceans, moving from place to place with boats equipped with the knowledge of sea navigation, outsiders in Asia call them sea gypsies. The Baiho community is everywhere, wherever seawater is found, from the waters of Malaysia to the southern part of the Philippines, from Brunei, Thailand to the waters of Vietnam. They inhabit almost all the waters of Southeast Asia. Thus, it feels strange if they are included in the debate to which country does this ethnic group belong. Let's start with the knowledge that they belong to the ocean. The largest population of Bacho people is in the waters of the archipelago. In Gorontalo, the Bayo community resides on the coast of Tarosiaje village, Pohuwato district. In Wakatobi, southeast Sulawesi, the Bajo community resides in the village of Mantigola, Kaladupa Island, as well as on Wangi Wangi Island and Tolandona, Tomaya Island. In North Maluku, they reside in Bayo Sangkwang village. In Luwuk Bangai, they reside in Bangkurung. Their population also resides in the waters of NTT and NTB, the waters of the eastern and northern parts of Kalimantan. Living in the middle of the sea, by the coast or in shallow waters with stone foundations and building materials. Stilt houses with ocean terraces, supported by water-resistant plant poles taken from mangrove areas, are designed to withstand the tide. Their roofs are made from sago palm leaves. Some houses are home to more than one family. Bridges usually connect houses and there's always a boat parked under the house, serving as their primary mode of transportation. These are traditional rowboats without engines. Since they are not confined by land boundaries, the language in all Bajo communities is almost the same, influenced only slightly by the languages of the mainlanders in each of their dwelling places. Originating from the Sama Bajau language family, a group with the greater Burrito languages, rooted from the large Austronesian family, it's still somewhat familiar to Asian ears. It's not an exaggeration to call the Bajo legendary fishermen, relying on hunting in the sea for their livelihood using three traditional methods, fishing, arrow shooting, and spearfishing directly into the sea. According to a 2020 research journal from IIN Sultan Amai Gorontalo, from these hunting activities, they have developed three seagoing traditions that use specific time frames, especially in the Baiho Gorontalo community. The first is going to sea with a small rowboat for one, two days then returning to the settlement. The second involves going to sea for weeks to months, taking the whole family along, and the third is going to sea en masse using many boats for several months, even settling in the middle of the ocean. During this time, they strictly avoid disposing of ashes, food and drink residues, cigarette butts, cooking wash water, citrus juice, and refrain from washing in the waters. Everything is collected to be disposed of on land later. Close to the sea, their culture and beliefs depend on the ocean. Believing in the spirits of ancestral rulers of the sea, they also start life by making peace with the ocean. When a baby is born, their placenta is thrown into the sea. They believe that the placenta of a male baby will turn into a kuta, octopus, and that of a female baby will become tuli, crocodile. And therefore, when there is disturbance from water creatures or a disease arrives, they believe it comes from their kin. Offerings to them will bring healing. These offerings usually consist of food items, which will, of course, be consumed by the species down below. The most famous taboo for them is throwing anything into the coral reef area. In times of disaster and illness, they always surrender to the sea through prayers and offerings. Likewise, when experiencing good fortune, they give thanks to the ocean. Their daily life, intimately intertwined with the ocean, has made them proficient divers. French media once documented how Beijo people, without any diving gear, could dive longer than ordinary people using equipment. They're said to be able to endure up to 13 minutes at a depth of 60 meters without any breathing apparatus or oxygen while hunting and even strolling around. Ordinary folks might last only 30, 60 seconds and diving experts up to five minutes. A friend of mine in Wakatobi once shared that a Bayo acquaintance of his had adapted to grow fins between his toes. Melissa Lardo, a doctoral candidate from the Center for Geogenetics at the University of Copenhagen, presented her research findings in a Bajo village in Jayabakti village, 358, Luwuk Bangai, central Sulawesi. 
Her presentation claimed that the Badho people were the first to genetically adapt for diving. She concluded this adaptation after finding that the spleen of Beho individuals is 50% larger than that of other people. Another mystery enveloping these sea people is their origin. They move from place to place and thus, by land dwellers across all regions, the Baho are considered newcomers. So where do they come from? Several theories exist. In Malaysian history lessons, they are said to originate from Johor, based on a fairy tale about a lost princess of Johor searched for by the Bajo, but she never returned. However, there's no archaeological evidence for this. Another theory suggests they originate from the Burrito River estuary, based on similarities between 12 words in the Bajo language and the Dayak Ngaju language. They started seafaring since the rise of the Srivijaya Empire, utilized to transport goods to China. This led them to move northward, namely to the Sulu Archipelago in the Philippines, due to the booming trade in the region. In the year 1400 AD, they resumed their explorations. After Islam spread, they migrated southward to the Nusantara and Madagascar regions. Whichever theory fits, the ocean is where the Bajo people come from, an ancient place for all species on Earth. But in the early 1990s, they were forced by the government to learn to live on land. Most of them had to be re-registered by the population registry. Leaving behind their sea navigation skills, they tried their hand at farming. Rising sea levels and coral reef damage forced some Bajo in Wakatobi to move to the hills. In Gorontalo, they were labeled as fish bombers. In the documentary The Bajo by Watchdoc in 2014, some Bajo were arrested for being considered illegal fishermen. Many middlemen also bought their catch at low prices. Many moved to land because their fishing areas were restricted by companies, and their sea settlements were taken over for coastal development projects. Driven from their own homes, but not accepted on land. Bajo, this is your story now.